what lesson do we learn here? Never trust anything you read on the internet without checking it with your scholars. Is that clear? Repeat after me. Never trust anything on the net unless you have checked it with a proper Muslim scholar. Because on the net, there are too many philosophers out there, too many self-made historians out there, too many thinkers and too many, um, too many chiefs and not enough Indians, as they say, yeah? Right? Uh, so you have to be very careful. Just because you have read a very eloquently written book or an eloquent speaker doesn't mean what he or she is telling you is true, right? All of these accusations are embarrassing. A lot of this stuff you can find. Apparently, some very learned people will come out with this stuff. Just because they have read it, they go on the net, and the net is infested with inaccurate, unauthentic information. One of the things you will read on this report of Aisha is Orwa, so Hisham, Hisham, Hisham. Hisham is the only narrator, he's untrustworthy, therefore the report is not trustworthy. But that is not the case. When you go deeper into Hadith science, you realize he's not the only. Then another idea these people who reject this report bring up is the age of Asma, the sister of Aisha. So they do a comparison and they say Asma was um, um, 27 years old or 17 years old. For that virtue, by that reasoning, Aisha could not have been what she was. Like she, she was not nine at the time of the marriage, she was older. And all of these reports about Asma's age are untrustworthy, amazingly. So they will reject an authentic report which the scholars of Islam unanimously accept. They have accepted it until the 19th century. And I will repeat no classical Muslim scholar, listen to me carefully. No Muslim scholar up to the 19th century ever questioned these reports on the age of Aisha radiallahu anha. None. Not one. It was after colonialism, after the rise of liberalism and secularism in the Muslim world, when Muslims felt inferior in the face of secular and liberal and atheistic onslaught, when they started to compromise some of their literature and their values. This is what caused the questioning. Even in the Western world, the Prophet was never criticized for this. And we will see why. So it is now clear, brothers and sisters, this report cannot be doubted. Any of you who had these ideas before, that Aisha was older than nine, just uh, to defend the Prophet against accusations of indecency and immorality, immorality then... Let me, let me tell you this now, you are wrong. There is no doubt that Aisha was nine when the marriage was consummated. Prophet Sallallahu had intimacy with Aisha when she was nine. And is that wrong? No. I'll tell you why. In today's world, yes. In today's world, it is, if someone did that today, everyone would be screaming, right? You would say, oh no, that's pedophilia, right? That's how people see it today. Because every single one of you has been conditioned. Every single one of us, we are born in a different age. We have different uh, perceptions. We have different expectations from society. We have never seen a 10 years old bride. Have you ever seen a 10 years old bride? Tell me honestly. Have you ever seen a 10 years old bride? Have, anyone? If you went to a wedding and you saw a 10 years old girl sitting in the place of the bride and there's a 40 years old man or 50 years old man sitting next to her, getting married to her. What would you think? Honestly, tell me honestly. Sorry? Outrageous. Absolutely immoral, right? Today. You know why? Because all of you were born when? I'm assuming after, the 19, uh, after 1950, yes? 1950? Unless there's someone 19, maybe 40? You're not going to... I don't think anyone was born before 1900. Anyone? No. If you, if you were, then tell me what you eat. <laughs> so, all of us were born after the year 1900 when social values were changed. We grew up in an age where this is not seen. It's not normal. If you saw someone, for example, riding a camel to Johannesburg, what would you think? Tell me. 
someone who wants to get, there are cars driving past. Yeah, there are jets, there are planes, right? And someone's on a camel, right? Riding a camel to Johannesburg or Durban. Or the other, tra- what's the other part of South Africa? The other side of South Africa. What's the, or maybe Malawi. Let's say Malawi, it's another country. Someone riding a camel to Malawi. You would think this person's mad, right? Unless he's doing some charity appeal or some, <laughs> you know, some kind of penance, right? Why? Times have changed. Expectations have changed. Now, let me shock you. What you will see now in due course may shock you. Because there were people before 1900, for them, a 10 years old bride was normal. A 7 years old bride was normal. Hello, are you listening? A girl at 7 could be married legally. We'll see. So these people who attacked the Prophet for doing something he did in the 7th century, which was normal for his time, are completely unaware of Islamic literature, Islamic history, Islamic morality, Islamic ethics. One. Second, they are also ignorant of human history. And we'll see how. Firstly, there is nothing from the Islamic history that the Qureshis, the arch enemies of the Prophet ﷺ ever used this as a slur against him, like Islamophobes today. What is the first thing the Islamophobes or the, uh, uh, or the, or the people who attack Islam use against the Prophet? First thing, number one, among many other things. Number one, what, what is it? Age of Aisha. Your prophet married a nine years old, right? Have you heard this before? Right. So from, from now on, from today onwards, you can tell them to go to books and get some education. Go and study. Because what you will see now will shock you as well. Believe me, it will shock you. Quraysh. No accusations. No eyelids were batted. The Qureshis never, they called him a soothsayer, a fortune teller, yeah, madman, what else? What else did the Qureshis call him, sallallahu alayhi wa They used everything, they tried to tarnish his name by any means, yes, right? They uttered poetry about him, but never did any one of them say, why did you marry a nine years old girl? Why did you marry, are you a pervert? None of them said that to him. You know why? Because they had nothing, uh, you know, there was nothing wrong with it. It was a common practice. There is nothing from Islamic literature that tells us that. Okay, what about medieval critics? During the Middle Ages, medieval period, the Prophet was criticized in Europe. You know who waged the Crusades against the Muslims? Crusades. Crusades were waged from France, England and Germany. Okay? What caused the Crusades? If we go by the traditional view, Pope Urban II, Pope Urban II in 1095 delivered a speech in a place called Clermont. And he encouraged the Christian knights in Europe who were fighting each other, killing each other, that why don't you unite and go and liberate the Holy Land from the infidels? Who were the infidels? Muslims, right? The Saracens, the infidels, go and liberate. And one of the ways those wars were justified was by attacking Islam and the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet of Islam was painted as one of the worst people who ever lived in the history of humanity by the European clergy at the time, Catholic monks writing on Islam, they painted, they lied on the Prophet, they said all sorts of things. And if anyone stood up to defend the Prophet, no, hold on a second, you lie. they were excommunicated. They were seen as troublemakers. That how dare you defend someone like Muhammad sallallahu And this process continued well up uh, as late as the 19th century, when some people actually said enough is enough, you have lied enough against this man, and now we have to put the record straight. Muhammad was not sallallahu alayhi wa what you say he was. And we will see how that happened. Right? 